Many people think that in order to live a luxurious, high value life, that you have to one, have a man, you can't do it while you're single, and two, you have to be super rich. And that is so false, and I'm going to tell you how. Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Allude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Without further ado, let's get into this video. I'm going to teach you how to be your own daddy and make your own sugar, okay? Now we know the terms high value has been overused through social media. It was so cute when it first came out. You know, all the feminine girlies, including myself, were doing videos on it, talking about it, but it has since become like this toxic thing it's been diluted you know that whole journey the feminine journey has kind of become kind of weird right and so a lot of us have kind of strayed away from those topics many people have had their own definition of what high value man is and what a high value woman is to many a high value woman doesn't necessarily have to be wealthy or have money right but she is beautiful fit has this aesthetic takes care of herself a little submissive but still you know assertive there's just so many labels that's on her there's a specific look and we've seen a lot of like Instagram pages that's come up with the look and everything there's like this whole aura with her but she doesn't doesn't necessarily have to have money she just has to be pretty enough poised enough elegant enough sophisticated enough to be able to attract a man who's worth a lot of money and she usually has a rich husband or she can get a lot of wealthy suitors that's to the generic form of the definition in the toxic way but some people have redescribed or redefined what the high value woman is to be someone of their moral character someone that has morals that is educated open-minded know their self-worth and doesn't necessarily have to have this aesthetic or specific look or um, look like everybody else or talk like everybody else she can have her own identity and just be confident in herself that is more of the positive definition that people have redescribed the high value woman for the man a high value man in the toxic days specifically was simply just a man who was worth a lot of money who had options <laughs> the man who can get the trophy wife the beautiful girl on her arm that has the beautiful girl on her arm simply because of how much money goods assets and wealth he has acquired right that was a high value man but now in modern terms we have redescribed what a high value man is by stating that it's not just money but it's moral character are you a high quality man i always say that are you a high quality woman what are your morals like it's more than just money it's how will you treat the woman okay do you feel like women are just disposable and that because of your assets you can treat people however you want and be rude or condescending and talk away etc and people have learned that these quote-unquote high value men have some of the worst characters and some of the quote-unquote high value women look down on other women and felt superior or looked down at women who didn't fit a particular aesthetic so a lot of people have kind of gone away from the toxicity of the whole high value culture right but one thing I wanted to speak of because it's still very much popular no matter how much we do away with it is that a lot of times especially if you're on Instagram I think it's very toxic to be on social media if you like to travel like someone like myself I love to travel but I have a whole vlog channel that's uh, featured on this channel you guys can check that out I'll put it in the comment I like to travel a lot right so a lot of times when you're traveling a lot you're more spontaneous you're going to museums or art gallery etc a lot of people have this toxic attachment that this girl must be able to do all of this because she's either selling something <laughs> if you catch my drift let's be pg for you know youtube or she must have a man low-key behind the scenes that's you know hooking her up it's almost an impossible idea that a pretty woman that did well for herself can afford to have a luxurious lifestyle without having a man and it's also toxic to look at every influencer um, on Instagram or you know Instagram model-esque type of woman with a lot of followers to just because they have this following a lot of men already automatically assume that they're a jump off if you catch my drift or they're going to Dubai and doing things and a lot of women have been guilty of judging these women also almost making it seem like it's impossible to for them to afford a certain lifestyle unless they're doing something crazy behind the scenes me personally I don't do sponsorships or something you guys have never seen me do like sponsorships on any of my channels or Instagram like that if I do promote something someone or a channel whatever it 
it's always because I want to and I'm not getting nothing for it, right? But but for those that do, they make a lot of money, guys. Just on one post alone, somebody can make twenty, thirty thousand dollars. I know people that make a hundred thousand dollars on one post. They never they don't have like YouTube channels, never start in a movie or anything like that, but just from affiliated marketing and just one post promotion, they make money. And not everyone takes their money and go to the Chanel store and buy 30 bags. You know, there's a lot of smart, intelligent women that flip their money, that do other things with it. And I feel like I used to be one of those people that thought like that, but with maturity, age, understanding, and wisdom, I learned that, yo, not everybody is living reckless or when they make this money, they just squander it, throw it away and do that. You will find that it it is a minority okay <laughs> I'm not gonna act like majority of people who make money online you don't know how to use it properly but for there are those that buy nice houses um, of course they have nice luxury items but they also invest in other things and have other businesses and create that wealth for themselves so when they do travel it's coming out of their pockets but people have this very negative attachment to it that it has to be somebody else. And I'm telling you, that's not the case. And you don't even have to be an influencer, but of course I use that example. There's a lot of lawyers. I have a lot of friends that are lawyers, doctors, nurses, uh, interior designers. My best friend's an interior designer. My brother's wife is a nurse, a registered nurse, who is an administrator for several facilities, uh, assisted living facilities, etc. Like you have people that really are business women, right? But they get online, but they're pretty. They're not necessarily seeking fame. They're not like, like me with a YouTube channel or anything like that. They're just online. They just happen to be pretty and people follow them. Some of them are married, but they still take their trips with their girls and stuff like that. And some are single. Like I have a, a friend who's a lawyer, prettiest girl, okay? She's single, but she travels a lot. She's always flying in and out, in and out of different countries. And it's like, girl, okay? Every time you see her and event coordinators, etc. And sometimes you'll see comments, like if she's on the beach, she take a bikini pic, even though that's not the majority of her um, page. People will have negative things to say. And I'm like me that know her personally. This girl, hmm, she's not giving nothing up. <laughs> I'ma just let you know that, that's her. She's not about that life, okay? And it sucks that there's this misconception. So I say all of this in my long intro to, to get to the point of, well, how can you live this life, Kareen, without having to, you know, seek a man to provide that for me or without having to go around other means. I'm going to tell you the number one way I'm going to be realistic with you. This is not going to be some cutesy little gimmicky video. I'm going to tell you straight up. If you want to live a luxurious, high value life, you need to first prioritize your finances. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be a millionaire, billionaire, a thousandaire to travel. I was not always in the best financial situations and I was still able to travel. Living a luxurious life doesn't just mean travel all right or traveling out of the country etc that's not all it is to gather your finances a lot of people a lot of young people don't like to take advice from their elders when they tell them like if you're going into an industry and they tell you hey do you have a plan b maybe you should take a safer route first for now and then go after that a lot of people don't it's very rare i know a lot of people want to believe that they'll be the exception to the rule and there will be people that is the exception to the rule but it's very rare to make it out here especially in industries where everyone wants to be rich and famous now right so a lot of people was like i'm gonna be a rapper i'm gonna be a singer i'm gonna be we all know that guy well if you don't you ain't been in the hood but we all know that guy that's like 46 and that's still selling his mixtapes outside trying to still pursuing it sometimes it can happen i'm not knocking nobody but at still a certain age he got kids he's living on people's couch sometimes he's living in people's garage and it's like at what point are you going to give it up and be like okay i need to have other plans and we all know that this older woman that's still chasing dreams of becoming the next britney spears or something and she's like in her 50s and stuff like i said it can happen but sis you got kids now you married you like it's, it has been working out like let's you know let's figure some things out let's have plan b's I, i'm a strong believer in still pursuing your dreams like if you have a talent or a skill still pursuing that talent that skill you know mastering it etc but also having a safety net 
I'm not just on here on YouTube. I can have the luxury of saying that if, for instance, doomsday come and then all social media does a blackout or something like that and I can no longer do YouTube, I'm not going to be out in the streets and can't sustain the lifestyle that I have because I have made plans before YouTube like, hey, let me make sure I'm secure and set in other ways so that when I sit up here, even if I wanted to take a break, I could. I don't have to take brand deals that I don't believe in or do extra or scam people or etc you know what I mean but a lot of people don't want to hear that because when you tell them this advice they feel like you don't believe in them and you don't want them to succeed and if they take your advice then that means they don't believe in themselves and I'm telling you no sis you can have high dreams high aspirations but please have a plan b and take it in a safe career that's advice from your big sis Kareen if you younger than me and if you older than me <laughs> This shoe, okay? A child shall lead them. Take this advice, okay? Trust me. And I'm only speaking like this because I have in my life lived this too. I've made mistakes and gone into um, certain careers. I have to change, I had changed my career path several times, okay? I originally wanted to be a psychologist, okay? And between you and I, I have changed my career path a lot. There might be a season in your life where, hey, it seems like everybody's going into this profession that's the safe profession. And then with AI that, that's come now, um, a lot of these professions are no longer viable. Get your finances together, girl, because you got no business trying to live a luxurious life if your money's not in order. A lot of people go into debt trying to live this luxurious life, being single or not, even when they become married. Like say you become married, there's a lot of wives that put their husbands in debt. Their husbands can never succeed, can never amount to anything or become something because their wives chose to live a lifestyle that's either beyond their means or go into career paths that will do nothing for them and they're in this hamster wheel of just unsuccessfulness <laughs> i don't know what to use so you need to get your stuff together okay get your stuff together figure out your finances have a plan write out a plan i can do more videos on this for you guys because another fun fact i used to work at a financial company right before youtube that's what i was doing 3d financial group and i worked there for several years i did credit repair um and financial advising also and help people get purchase their first homes their first cars etc so i'm really good with you know finances i'll just say that i'm really good with my finances so i can do some videos for you guys i've already i got a financial playlist on this channel i've already done a couple but if you need some inspiration job ideas recession proof positions i already did a video for recession proof jobs and career paths that you can check out also but get your situation in order because you got no business living a luxurious lifestyle if your coins are not coining okay second way one of the key things that make a girl so attractive or a woman attractive when we see them that's quote unquote have the high value aesthetic is how polished they are how well put together they are their appearance their hair everything you know everything is so polished but one of the the people that do stand out like everybody wants to look like kim kardashian right there was that era where people were going to have plastic surgeons wanting to look like her and having the nude aesthetic the silk aesthetic and stuff and it's nice i personally too i like that aesthetic but now i see a lot more creativity especially with tiktok there's like the cottage core i love that aesthetic the french type of look and then even for my caribbean sisters which i am i like to play around with my aesthetic a lot it's whatever mood i'm in because i do love colors i do love fashion a lot okay so it depends on the mood but now you can play around with different type of aesthetics you can do more of the preppy girly girl you can do the nude palette kim kardashian is or whatever or you can do cottage core whatever you want to do but make sure whatever you do you are polished <laughs> you are polished okay and polished meaning that your hair is kept your your hygiene is first and foremost. It's a tough love thing I'm about to say. There's people like, you'll see men, they'll have like 12 cars, okay? Benz, Bentleys, G-Wagons, all of that. Huge house, large pool, this and that, all the latest fashions. And then they talk to you and their mouth is just terrible, okay? And I'm, I'm being, I'm, I hope no one takes offense to this. Like I'm being realistic with you because how you present yourself, especially when I worked in corporate was a big deal. Even when we would have business meetings at the company that I worked at, like they look at little things like nails. I've had to hire people before and had to look at these things. I know it's tough to hear and a lot of people get insulted in previous videos when I give this. It's in no means to insult, but I got to keep it real with you, sis. I have to keep it real with you. It sucks when you see a guy got it all going on, 
until they open their mouths and you like all that money and you never went to got your situation situated you know even with women you're spending like twenty five thousand on a bag but it's like and i'm not telling nothing against veneers people a lot of people always think i got veneers no it's a haitian thing they don't want you to suck your thumb and mess it up and stuff they just put hot pepper on your thumb i'll give y'all those stories maybe the next may 18th because i did um a haitian video already for may 18th this year that just came but i'll do another one some of our little traditions but no i i don't i have my own reasons for veneers that i don't encourage people to go get them because i've personally had people that i know that went and got veneers and kind of messed up the sensitivity of their tooth there's a whole lot that goes into that but if there is there are situations that it will require that then do it but please don't do it at a discounted price please that's all i can say go to a professional go to someone who knows what they're doing that specifically specializes in this don't go to a plastic surgeon that only do rhinoplasty and then go get your veneers from them because i know a lot of them be doing stuff like this please don't okay and um get your braces if you have to you're never too old to get braces i don't care about girl who cares get your braces if you have to get your annual teeth cleaning and stuff like that and there's a lot of vitamin deficiencies that can decay your teeth but your teeth can repair itself okay if you do certain oil um pulling like you floss with certain essential oils and stuff like that i can do a whole spill on that for you guys but there's things that will matter like your nails your mouth your skin like if you have all that money don't do harsh things to your skin do the more natural ways to have them i specifically i love indian beauty secrets certain masks they do etc take care of that drink your water get your sleep cut off that alcohol you can't be drinking every weekend it's gonna make you glow bloated your skin's gonna be bad i used to be a heavy heavy drinker listen i've been clean delivered thank you jesus because it just is not good for you it sucks when you yeah rocking your chanel makeup done hair done everything's nice and then you have like everywhere you know take care of that it could be pcos go to a hormonal doctor go to a holistic doctor if your insurance can cover it and if you can't figure out hormone there's natural things that you can do for your hormones start researching start being resourceful which goes into my third thing if you want to live a luxurious life you got to be resourceful because a lot of people when they travel like i travel a lot I'm not paying dropping $50,000 on a trip just like that. I'm not even if I fly first class or I'm staying at the Ritz Carlton or the Four Seasons. It ain't always just coming all at once, okay? It's not. Even if you have the money, it's there. A lot of rich people don't do that. They'll use certain credit cards that has perks points that they can use for that or they'll get discounted from it. You be resourceful and figure out you don't have to even have like a platinum card with american express chase have some cards for travel also that it could be easier for you to get and they start you off at a amount and then they increase your limit the more you pay and it comes with perks you can use your points to travel also you don't always have to pay everything all at once when you um do certain activities uh certain travels like you don't have to pay everything at once they have like certain after pay i'm telling you even the wealthiest people be the stingiest people. Don't let people on here that scam you guys. Because a lot of people get rich off of selling you stuff, scamming you, and then come here and try to give you advice about what the rich do and what they don't do. Don't do that, okay? Rich people don't seldom give their secrets like that. They're very stingy with their secrets. But a lot of them are very stingy with money. They're the stingiest, cheapest people and you'll see them on a trip and they probably only paid five dollars for it their first class and you thinking they dropped twelve thousand dollars for that um for a first class seat and they didn't okay there's a lot of secrets out there but i do want to encourage people to be resourceful because you don't need a lot of money there's people that make thirty thousand a year that still gets to travel luxuriously not even on their dime they just know how to finesse things by being resourceful so a pretty girl a luxurious girl is always gonna know how to be resourceful okay but the next is to try different cuisines you don't got to eat the same places try different experiences if you want to live a luxurious life and it doesn't need you don't need to fly out to other countries to do that you don't no one was broken to me when i was in college i tell y'all the story all the time i was out here me and my best friend was out here eating noodles every night and sometimes we didn't have noodles there was one time i opened the fridge and i tell this story all the time me and her laugh at it now i opened the fridge and there was only cabbage like a half of a cabbage wedge in the fridge and we had salt we have pepper and we have picante. That's it. 
And guess what? I chopped up that cabbage and we ate cabbage soup for like two days until we could situate ourselves. That's how bad it was for us, okay? That's how bad it was for us. But regardless, me and her, we was just driving just this weekend past our old apartment. <laughs> She's married, not a moved out. We was just driving by our old apartment talking about how fond those memories were. Cause one thing me and her used to do, we used to still have no experiences. Even though we didn't have money, we used Groupons. If it was $100, we'll get it for 15, save up our little money together. We'd go to natural springs. We discovered a lot of like, there's a butterfly park here. Florida got a lot, okay? So we'd go to the butterfly park wear our cutest little outfits with books take pictures and stuff we didn't have money it was free we go to springs that were free okay go for swims drive to the beach <laughs> that was nearby we'd look for opportunities like that and we still experience some of this lifestyles and i told y'all in a previous video that one thing that i used to do when i stayed in the hood in a bad situation we used to drive to go look at mansions. And there's one area in, in, in Florida that's called in Orlando where Shaquille O'Neal, Tiger Woods, uh, Yolanda Adams, I believe, all live there called Windermere, Florida. And we'd drive to Windermere and just drive around, just looking at the house, like this is what could be, this is what, you know. And it helps you to see that it motivated you. It gave me new motivation. And I'd go back home and I'd get to the books. I'd be studying, I'd be writing out plans. I'd have my vision board. It gave me new life. And I knew that this is not where I want to stay. but. I explored. I didn't let my circumstance make me feel weird for wanting to go experience certain things. So you don't need money to experience certain things. Go out there and experience certain things. I used to save up my refund checks from um, financial aid, FAFSA on deck. You know what it is? I used to get them fat, juicy refund checks and try to make them stretch. But I'll buy like those little roller thingies for your back for massage. I bought foot massagers and stuff. I still stock up on my makeup up once I get paid and stock up on my facial creams and products and leave them there until I get my next refund check four months later. Listen, and I still would do a spa night every Friday night because for me that's Sabbath, right? And so on the Sabbath for me, that would be my self-care luxury, wash my hair, massage, then my own nails. I couldn't afford to go to the nail salon, so I would let my nails grow out, file them, learn to do little designs and stuff like that. Still take care of yourself. You really don't have to wait to have money and then when people saw me they never knew my struggle people never knew we were struggling that bad people were shocked we even had friends that were close i'm telling you my own family didn't know how bad i was struck because i was so prideful we didn't look like our struggle you don't got to look like your struggle even if it took me a long time to save if i was looking for outfits i would buy a lot of neutral colors um stuff that was a little bit more durable even if it's cheaper you go to ross you go to the clarence section you take your time i'm telling you take your time and i hate shopping i really do i like to go in the store know what i'm getting get it for me you had to have a lot of patience to go to the clearance section sit there take your time go look through things try them out and make sure this is gonna last me a good minute i'd be wearing calvin klein dresses from ross that i bought for 19 dollars, and they were thick heavy i'd get all those shoes i'd get um i even bought a versace shoe from a clearance section at a discounted store and it was like a versace limited edition and i got that for 30 dollars something now that would cost 900 dollars 1200 dollars or whatever i would buy yves saint laurent from oh my goodness is it plato's closet i think it's called plato's closet but it's like a thrift store go thrifting because they have some good quality and I, I would find like Versace purses dresses and stuff for ten dollars like I'm telling you discounted and we were lit we were lit we did not look like our struggle we was thriving according to everybody else but we did it away and I know it's like oh fake it why well, I don't know why people are so concerned with people that they want to look good too and they get things cheaper and then people want to call that out and be like oh how to spot a fake rich person how to spot someone who's not really this and that like why do you care let people have their escapism life is rough enough we go through enough in life that we gotta watch people to see who's really rich and who's not who's rocking a fake bag and who's not life is short okay and i find the people that is the most nitpicky about who's really rich or not they really ain't got it like that because oftentimes i got some story times for y'all 
Bible of how many times I've been at a thrift store and I've seen somebody really wealthy in there. Not just dropping off, looking for stuff. I'm telling y'all, wealthy people be stingy. Everybody has money problems. Rich people have their own money problems. But you can't compare, like, I, that's the first person that comes to my mind. Don't judge me. Like Trump, for instance, where he filed for bankruptcy and everything. People are like, oh, he's broke making broke jokes. I'm like, listen, Trump's broke is not your broke. <laughs> you making fun of his brokenness. I'm telling you right now, that's not your broke. Your broke is a whole different type of broke, okay? For the average person's broke. That's what I mean. I know people that start panicking because, oh my goodness, their account is starting to go down to less than $20,000. And to them, that's broke. But their bills monthly adds up. You know what I mean? But someone who's looking, you got $20,000, you're not broke, da, da, da. You cannot compare brokenness okay so these people can have their money problems too and they're saying trying to flex why you you comfortable because you didn't waste your money on stuff for appearances to fit in with a certain class of people and you did things responsibly that is all with financial advising and i wouldn't know all of this thing i give credit to god because the the bible is the most <laughs> it's the best book for economy and i'll do a separate video on what the bible says about money economy social classes etc i think it'll be very interesting comment below if you want that but it's i was lucky enough blessed enough to have learned a lot of these things from the bible but also going to school for them and this is how you can live a luxurious life being disciplined single and now when you live in your life people are gonna think that somebody it must be this it must be that but they don't gotta know your secret you're living your life, they don't gotta know your secrets. They don't gotta know your problems. They Let them think. It's not always flexing. <laughs> a lot of people are hating on people that really just finesse in the system. You're hating on somebody with what they're wearing, but you don't know that they got it for $2. You don't know that they got it for five. And you losing your mind, taking your hard earned money to go purchase it. Being rich is not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you can keep, how much money you can re finance you can flip that's what it's about and you got to learn the laws be resourceful that's how you live a luxurious high value classy elegant life why you broke <laughs> and why you single <laughs> but mostly get your stuff together sis because you got to start from somewhere i understand that but don't stay in that place like i started somewhere but my life is motivational to me and I hope it can be motivational to you. If you guys really knew where I started from, I came from the bottom, the trenches, okay? When you've already been in the trenches, take that leap forward, sis, okay? Don't let it stop you, okay? I hope that can be motivation for you. But I love you guys so much. Comment below your thoughts. What do you think? Do you have advice of your own? I love you guys so much. Comment below what other videos you guys would like to see, especially on the topic of this. <laughs> I love this topic because you can see I'm so animated. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Mwah.